What's up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Baseball Freak 75 and we're bringing you guys another video here today. And um, in today's video, I'm going to be uh, going over USA Today, um, it's their rankings, their predictions for the uh, upcoming 2021 season. And uh, I'm going to kind of give my analysis on uh, what they selected and uh, go over how I think the season will kind of um, play out. Um, I think these uh, predictions are a lot more fair if you will, then uh, I, f I forgot the uh, people, the MLB posted uh, like a prediction list from somebody, I forget who they used, but I thought that list was atrocious, so I didn't even want to try to go over that, but USA Today I think did a lot better job, um, I don't know what kind of algori algorithms or uh, theories that they used, whatever they did though, looks a lot better to me. We're going to start it off with the American League, then go to the National League. Um, so right here, they have the Yankees in first place in the East. Um, I think that's what pretty much everybody expects. Um, they had a couple big moves. Um, nothing crazy, though. They brought back uh, LeMahieu, which is really big for them. Um, they also got Corey Kluber and James Tyone. Uh, so those are some solid pieces. If Kluber can go anywhere near how he used to be in the past, just like even a... And in the Yankees' ballpark, anything under a 4 ERA for him would be pretty big. Um, they're also getting Luis Severino back, and we don't know how uh, James will do there. Hopefully, he'll do decent. Um, but they got a really solid rotation now, now that they picked up all those pieces. Um, they've al also added, I think, a couple pieces of the bullpen as well, which they already have a strong bullpen. So, that's that. Um, the World Series, um, not champions, but World Series contending Rays. Um, Second place, I don't quite agree with that. Um, I could definitely see them maybe doing that. Uh, they signed Chris Archer. They got rid of Blake Snell. But in that trade, they got a, they received Luis Patino, who has a lot of upside. So maybe if he can uh, be anything like he's um, uh, what he's supposed to be, then maybe he could be a big piece in that rotation. But we shall see. Um, I'm kind of thinking with all the moves the Blue Jays made that they will take over that second place spot, but I would I'm not I would not be shocked if the Rays uh, did good enough to get in second place because they're they're just a team that always has that grittiness and grinds um, at the very end of the season anyways, and they always find themselves in a place uh, to make the playoffs in a position to make the playoffs. But I think with the acquisition of uh, George Springer. Marcus Simeon, they picked up a couple pitchers. Um, I think the Blue Jays are really looking to solidify themselves in that second spot in that division. Um, I also think the win totals are a lot uh, more realistic here than, say, in uh, the one that MLB posted. Um, the Red Sox winning 80 games and going 80, 82, finishing fourth place. I can see that. The Red Sox made a couple moves. Um, who was it they got from the uh, Rays? They got uh, Renfro, I believe. Um, they dropped him to waivers, and I guess the Red Sox picked him up. I, I, did the Red Sox do something that I'm forgetting? I can't remember. I feel like there's some, like a move the Red Sox made that I'm just forgetting. I know they traded Ben Attendi, but I don't remember who they got back for him. But I think fourth place is fair for the Red Sox. They don't have a horrible team, but they just don't have any pitching, really, besides uh, Eduardo Rodriguez, I think is his name. Besides him and Chris Sale, um, they don't have anything pitching wise I mean their bullpen they have like two okay at best pieces uh, workman and uh, I forget the other guy's name but uh, it's just Thornburg I think is his name they're just okay um, the uh, Orioles for sure looking to be in last place in that division they got a couple good pieces up and coming like oddly Rutschman stuff like that but I just don't see them winning that many games 60 I think is even a little a little um, generous because that division that division is going to be pretty tough for the Orioles to win that many games in. Um, but anyways, we're going to move on to the AL Central. Um, they have the White Sox in first place, which I could definitely see um, with uh, getting Tony La Russa as their manager now, who's an amazing manager, one of the best of all time in my opinion. Um, I think he'll really, uh, really change that team for the better. They got Liam Hendricks. Um, they got Lance Lynn also, I believe. And uh, I can't remember if they got anybody else that I'm missing. But I know they got those three pieces, and that's really going to bolster them on an already solid team. Um, did they get Mazar? I think they got no more Mazar. Or maybe they already had him. I don't remember. Um, very solid, though. Definitely a first or second place team, unless the Indians just 
start, you know, destroying. But I don't. Their lineup, while their lineups really, we'll get into that here in a minute. Uh, the Twins have arguably one of the best lineups in the whole entire game of Major League Baseball. Amazing. Their pitching is okay. Uh, their rotation it has a really solid one and two with uh, Maeda and uh, Barrios. But after that, it kind of dies down a little bit. And also the Indians, or not the Indians, excuse me, the or I guess just Cleveland now, it isn't the Indians anymore. Uh, Minnesota um, also picked up Anderson Simmons. That, that's a really good uh, move for them at shortstop. They'll have some really good defense uh, with him. And also he always hit, has, hits for pretty good like average, usually anywhere from 270 to 300. So if they can add that into the lineup already with um, Nelson Cruz, who's returning, um, with Byron Buxton and uh, with Mitch Garver, pieces like that, that lineup will be pretty solid. But the pitching in the bullpen, like later on down the stretch, is where I really worry about them. But I can definitely see them finishing in either second or third place. Moving on, they have the Indians, 82 and 80. Um, this is where I personally think they'll end up either second or third place, more than likely third. While their pitching is, is it's really like good, but talent wise, but they're just. Anytime the Indians get anybody that's really solid, they just trade them away. Mike Clevenger, Trevor Bauer, Lindor. I, I, I mean, it's a small market team, and it just sucks to see all those good players, amazing players, leave from that team. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Zach Plesak was on the move. Like, they just can never seem to keep players because they just don't want to pay them. That's really sad, not only for Indians fans, or, excuse me, Cleveland baseball fans. I'm sorry, I just can't understand why they just changed the name of all these teams. But the Cleveland baseball team, why they would, um, why they would do that? Like they just trade away everybody because they don't want to pay them. They're honestly like the, another version of the Rays. Um, but we'll see. They they have J Ram. If they don't trade him, I mean that's gonna be pretty much their entire offense. Besides maybe, um, oh, what is his name? I can't remember. He came over from um, from the Padres. Uh, Fran Mill. He's very solid as well. Um, and also they got rid of uh, Santana and oddly enough he's going to the, our uh, fourth place team here the Royals um, the Royals I think they're not as bad as you would think they've made a couple moves that if uh, their pitching can even be okay that uh, their lineup is getting solid enough now that uh, they could definitely uh, push for fourth place um, the Ro or the uh, Tigers, excuse me, one of the worst teams uh, right now in baseball. So I think, obviously, that the Kansas City Royals will at least finish in fourth place, barring some huge injuries. I mean, if their whole... If Santana got injured, if Soler got injured, I still think the Royals would have a better team that would uh, compete more so than the Tigers. I mean, that, that team is atrocious. Um... Honestly, the only team I think that's worth worse than the Tigers is the Pirates. Um, moving on to the uh, West, um, we have the Houston Astros. I think they will finish in first place again. Um, while their team may not be as good um, postseason-wise, I mean losing Springer for the especially in like the postseason, not only the regular season, that to me like he's one of the best postseason bats of all time. So not having him on your team, that's really going to hurt him in the postseason. But this is just the regular season prediction. As far as the regular season goes, I still think the Astros have enough pitching to get to first place. Their lineup's still really solid. We're, we're going to just have to see how it all plays out. They're getting Jordan back, who's one of the better bats in baseball, or has been the past couple seasons when he's been on. Um, just is so... Like you, you just do not want to face Jordan Alvarez if you were a pitcher. He has tremendous power, really good hitter, rookie of the year. Um, I don't know. I think the Astros n don't necessarily easily have first place, but I think it's theirs to lose. Um, Oakland Athletics coming in second. Now, I can either see the Athletics finishing second or third. They still have a pretty good bullpen. Their rotation is pretty trash and uh they lost one of their better hitters in marcus simeon which really really hurts them um besides matt chapman and matt olson and mark canna their lineup is pretty bad honestly i guess sean murphy's okay i, I just don't know um I, I really don't know i think a lot of uh, where oakland's gonna finish is gonna have to rely on how well the angels are doing 
um, and kind of like vice versa. So going on to the uh, Angels, um, honestly, they just haven't been able to get the pitching, and that's why they still. That's why they miss the postseason like almost every year because they just can't get the pitching in place to um, just like help their offense. Their offense is fine. You have Walsh. You have uh, Pujols, who's you know broken down, beaten to the ground, but he's still serviceable you have Mike Trout you have Otani you have um Justin Upton who they're paying him a lot but he, he still can hit for some power that lineup's no uh, no joke but their pitching is just tremendously bad so they can't ever really you know get anything going besides like Dylan Bundy who they got from the uh Orioles who they uh, traded for you know the previous season and Bundy had a really good season but besides him pitching wise I mean I guess in the bullpen they have Robles and um they traded for Iglesias, so I mean the bullpen, two okay pieces, but the rotation is horrendous. Besides Bundy, um, moving on to Seattle, um, they're a decent up and coming team. They still lack a lot of uh, the pieces they need, mainly in uh, the rotation department. They did pick up um, James Paxton, so if he's healthy, that could really help them out a lot. But will he be healthy? We don't know. Um, Marco Gonzalez is also pretty pretty dang good pitcher. Um, but going against the Angels lineup, Oakland's lineup, and Houston, I, I just don't think the Mariners have it in them yet. But the Angels pitching, this is kind of a hot take, Angels pitching is so bad that I think maybe you can toss the Angels in Seattle up for, for grabs for third place. I, I mean, I, I could see it happening. The Angels pitching is just that bad. It really is, in my opinion. Um, but Seattle, yeah, I definitely think they're going to finish fourth place. Um, they could also, if they really get it going, though, maybe third place if their bats can be sustainable, which besides uh, Kyle Lewis last year, who was really their big uh, help, doesn't look too good for them. Um, and then the Rangers, we don't need to really talk about them. They are, have really fallen from grace ever since, you know, 2011. They've just went down. Um they have not been able to retain really like anybody. I mean, they have a couple good pieces, and they trade one of their better pieces um, and Elvis Andrews to Oakland, who I think that'll help them out. You know, it's not going to be the same bad as Simeon, but he'll be serviceable. Um, but, yeah, the Rangers don't have much going for them, and if they trade Gallo or any of their other, like, um, at least mildly okay players, say uh, Rugnet Odor, they're, they're rebuilding. That's all I can say. Moving on to the National League, um, we have the Atlanta Braves in first place. I could I could see that happening, not necessarily easily, but I could definitely see it happening. Uh, the Braves has a have a very solid lineup, one of the better lineups in the game, and their pitching is nothing to slouch at either. Their pitching is very solid. Uh, still a lot of like unknowns, but from last year and the previous year, the Braves are always slept on. And the uh, MLB's list that they. Uh, Whatever, like again, I forget what, who they used, but whatever they used when they posted um, the predictions, they had Atlanta in fourth place, and that's that's not right. Atlanta, at the very very least, in my opinion, is second place. Uh, but I think it's going to be the Braves and the Mets hashing it out for first place. Um, it could easily go one of two ways. The Mets just can never really get it together, even with acquiring a whole bunch of different pieces. Uh, most notably, though, Lindor and Carlos Carrasco. We're going to have to see because they, they just never can get it together. But who knows, maybe this year will be the year, but it's definitely going to be Atlanta and uh, the Mets uh, hashing it out for first place, in my opinion. And then in third place, we have the Nationals. And the Nationals, I think, are a pretty underrated team. But again, there's a lot of what-ifs in that lineup, such as like maybe Schwarber, who's going to hit for power, but you don't know what you're going to get in the average department. And then there's Josh Bell, who you have no idea what you're going to get at all from him. They picked up John Lester, who was pretty bad last year, so who knows, maybe the Nationals can fix him. Um, still, the Nationals have one of the better rotations in the game. Um, we're just, we're just going to have to see. I think fourth place is where the Phillies are, where they belong. Maybe they could, if they can get hot, they can get to the third place. I don't see them finishing any higher than that. They're one of the more overrated teams in the game of baseball, in my opinion. Um, I'm not the biggest fan. They re-signed Romuto, but their pitching is still atrocious and especially the bullpen. That bullpen is one of the worst in baseball for a team that is quote-unquote like a contender. They are, I don't think they're a contender, but 
even close to it being a contender, their bullpen is trash. Uh, moving on to the Marlins, they're not necessarily on the cusp, but they're almost on the cusp. Here in probably five or so years, they're going to be a team to look out for, I would assume. But right now, they, they still don't have it together yet. Even though they made the playoffs last season, um, they still need to have more uh, sustainable bats in their lineup. Uh, the pitching is pretty solid, um, but again, nothing crazy. They need to have uh, the rookies, you know, they need some more veterans in that lineup, honestly. They need uh, their rookie players to mature a little bit more also and just, you know, get more experience at the major league level. Um, and here we go, the National League Central. Um, my team, the St. Louis Cardinals, I, I don't want to say they're going to run away with it, but I think they decently easily have it um i don't want to sleep on the brewers or the cubs but like the cubs pitching is so bad their lineup is solid but if they're talking they're discussing trading bryant they're discussing trading Contreras. if they trade any one of them either one of them it's not going to be good um they are not looking to really do anything um if that's the case so if they lose either one of those guys or even if they traded buys, they need to rebuild. Um, this is probably the last year the Cubs really have a chance to uh, do anything until they rebuild. Um, the Brewers picked up, most notably, the most notable pickup they got is Colton Wong. I can't really remember who else they got, or if they did get anybody else. It wasn't a big name if they did. But I, I don't want to sleep on the Brewers because Yelich is really all that team, like... Depending on how Yelich Yel does, how well that team is going to do. Their pitching is solid, their rotation is good, their bullpen is lights out. Um, but but lineup wise, I mean, Jed Jerko can't be your mainstay in a lineup. The Cardinals tried that out and it didn't work for them, and you can't have it work for the Brewers either. Hero's going to have to really step up for that team. Um, my personal opinion, I think the Reds are going to be the only team that really rivals the Cardinals, unless the Cubs just go off on a rampage. Uh, hitting wise but I, I i can't foresee that because the pitching is just so bad that no matter how many runs they score i think the opposing team is just going to score right back i could be wrong though but i think the team to watch out for like i said is the reds if they can get their hitting like how they should if they can get their hitters on the level that they should be castianos moustakis joey Votto, etc jesse winker etc they will be a very, very dangerous lineup to face, along with a solid 1-2 in the rotation of um, Sonny Gray and Luis Castillo. Now, now, I don't remember, I don't know quite necessarily maybe uh, who the rest of their uh, lineup, or not lineup, excuse me, rotation consists of, but uh, that's a very solid 1-2. Um, and I think if they can, their lineup is arguably the best in the Central. Um, I would say it's way better than the Brewers, in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Um, so if I were ranking the Central, I'd say Cardinals. It just depends on how the Reds do. I'd say Cardinals, Reds, uh, Brewers, Cubs, Pirates. I mean, the, we know the Pirates are going to be the worst team in baseball, more than likely. They have done nothing except trade away pieces. They have been in rebuild mode for the past, what it, has it been, almost six seasons probably now? I mean, it, I feel so bad for Pirates fans. I don't even know how you would watch a game like that must be complete torture just turning on your tv moving on to the national league west the final division we're going to talk about we have the world series champ uh, champions los angeles dodgers who did nothing except add to their um great team they re-signed turner they went out and <laughs> and signed um trevor bauer who is the biggest free agent on the market in a lot of people's opinion and uh, they traded for uh, someone on the Marlins who has a lot of upside, who throws complete gas. I don't remember his name off the top of my head. I apologize. But they got I think they got a steal on that kid. That kid looks so good. Uh, I think he'll be filthy for the Dodgers here in a couple years or whenever he gets to the major leagues, if he does. Um, there's not a lot more to say about the Dodgers than you. That is the best team in baseball. I mean, there's no team that compares. They just... They have such a, a knack for drafting, trading for talent. You, you just got to respect the Dodgers. And, and uh, I, there's nothing more to say. You just have to respect the Dodgers. Um, the San Diego Padres have really went out of their way to make sure that they can compete with the Dodgers. And I think they're not. while they're not at the level the Dodgers are, they are not far off at all. It is 1A and 1B. Um, 
the Padres don't have as good a lineup as the Dodgers, it's still really solid. You still get your Trent Grisham, Manny Machado, Tatis, um, Mitch Moreland. They signed an international player from uh, Korea, Japan, something like that. Uh, Kim, uh, something like that. He has a lot of upside. He looks like he could have 20 plus home run power at second base. Um, a decent looking infielder. Um, not much more to say except you know that's going to be your one and two and barring a crazy like series of injuries or turn of events um the dodgers have that unlocked down the padres will be in second place for sure um going on to the diamondbacks and the the giants and the rockies um i don't know the uh diamondbacks I don't necessarily know how I feel about them. They have a couple good pieces, such as Cattell Marte. They have Zach Gallen. They um, they really have they have David Peralta, and they still have Eduardo Escobar. Those are okay pieces that would be good on other teams. Um, I honestly, personally think the Diamondbacks should look at rebuilding because I think the Giants are in a better state than the Diamondbacks are. Um, if it was me doing this list, I would say I would put the Giants above um, the Diamondbacks, and I would put the Diamondbacks in fourth place. And then we get that moves us to the Colorado Rockies. Now, while their lineup was really solid with Nolan Arenado, but him having him gone like him uh, going to the Cardinals, excuse me, uh, really really loosens that lineup uh, in a way that uh, that was really the only thing they could rely on. Their only reliable pitcher, even close, was a. Uh, Herman Marquez, and he's looking to be traded. Story should probably be traded, honestly. It sucks to be a Rockies fan. They have such a beautiful ballpark, and the atmosphere there is just pretty good. I mean, I, the fans, I don't want to say they're, like, the best, but you just got to feel bad for them. I mean, they seem like they're good fans, um, all the ones that I've met and talked to. Um, I mean, it, you just have to feel nothing but sympathy for him like losing one of your franchise stars basically for literally nothing and while uh el harris i think is montero has like some upside i mean they, they literally stole nolan arenado and they paid him money on top of that to take him i mean that's i don't even know how you wake up the next day if you're a rockies fan and still cheer on that team but uh, that's going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, share, comment, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy. Peace out.